This episode is sponsored by BetterHelp. Guys, therapy has helped many of my friends and family. There is no need to feel bad or ashamed about going to therapy. Getting help is a part of the journey, and that's what BetterHelp does. Without a healthy mind, being truly happy and at peace is hard. The good news is therapy works. But what is therapy? It's whatever you want it to be. Maybe you're not feeling motivated right now and would like some tools to help you. Or maybe you're feeling insecure in relationships or at work. Or you just have a lot on your plate. Whatever you need, it's time to stop being ashamed of normal human struggles and start feeling better because you deserve to be happy. And now you don't have to worry about finding an in-person therapist near you. BetterHelp is customized online therapy that offers video, phone, and even live chat sessions with your therapist. So you don't have to see anyone on camera if you don't want to. It's much more affordable than in-person therapy, and you can start communicating with your therapist in under 48 hours. Join the millions of people who are seeing what online therapy is really about. It's always a good time to invest in yourself because you are your greatest asset. Right now is a special offer to my listeners, Lay Your Brick listeners. You can get 10% off your first month of professional therapy at betterhelp.com slash LYBCade. That's betterhelp.com slash LYBCADE. Thanks again to BetterHelp for sponsoring this episode. Guys, welcome back to another episode of Lay Your Brick. This week we have Isaiah Schwint on the podcast. We dive into his world, anything and everything fitness. Isaiah is a physical therapist and a personal trainer. In anything fitness, he will ask you right away, what are your goals? This will fabricate how you go about your fitness journey. There's so much guidance and direction in this episode, so please pay attention. And with that, let's get straight into it. My name is Isaiah, age 26. Um, I went to the University of North Dakota to study um, physical therapy. And that's where I got my doctorate of physical therapy. Um, I have been practicing for about two years now. I'm outside in the working world, the COVID world. And, uh, it's pretty interesting, man. There's a lot to learn out there. And I'm by no means a, I mean, no means genius on anything, but, uh, you continue to learn, man. It's amazing how the second you get done with school, that's only the starting line of what you're going to really learn. So, um, I really enjoyed my first job, which was in Sartell, Minnesota. I was primarily an aquatic therapist and it was amazing. Like it was so much fun to be able to interact with people and get into the water. It was a chronic pain setting. So a lot of people who were having trouble, just like literally the effect of gravity on their body hurt walking, going upstairs, all these things. And you'd get them waist, waist high or chest high in water. And the buoyancy of the water would reduce their overall weight to, you know, a fifth of what it was. So you'd have people coming in and walking with 50 pounds on them. And they felt amazing. The amount of relief that they felt in their joints and things like that was astounding. So I knew I hit my stride really well with, uh, with, with therapy in general. It really, it really did hit with me. So, That's um, yeah, I never, a lot of people come with origin stories of physical therapy of like, oh, I was, I was the athlete in high school and I went and got hurt and it was, my life was over until my therapist got me back, gave me my life back and rah, rah, physical therapy. And, and that's <laughs> awesome. And I respect that, but I actually didn't have that story. I just, uh, I just always wanted to be in the medical field and I like being social and I like being a resident expert in, um, you know, the musculoskeletal body and having like a, like being authority figure, have being that ability being that person for people to come to and ask questions to, you know, and try and try and know as much as I can about a certain topic. So um, when things come up, I can, I can offer my opinion, whether that for better or worse. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. So why physical therapy just in general though? Cause like you said, you wanted to do something medical. So like what drove you to that instead of like a sure. personal trainer or anything like that? Sure. So um Personal training is awesome. And that's actually what I do in my second job here. Okay. Um, ever since I moved from Fargo or from Sartell to Fargo, where I'm currently located is working a lot with personal trainers. And I have a newfound respect for the intelligence and capabilities of personal trainers. So I know sometimes they can get a bad rap for being like the weekend warriors and, and kind of going outside of their bounds as far as what they know or what they're capable of. But at least the personal trainers I work with are top tier they're very knowledgeable, but they're also very humble, which I respect. So yeah. if they're, if they feel like there's something outside of their bounds, um, they're very, they're very good at, you know, acknowledging that, but, uh, to get to your, get to your question, um, why physical therapy and not anything else in the medical field? 
Um, both of my parents are nurses and some extended family are doctors and pharmacists and, and a lot of different things, in the, a lot of different professions in the medical field. And um, we did not have a physical therapist. And one thing I really enjoyed that physical therapy has that maybe a lot of the medical system doesn't have is a relatively low stress rate. Like a lot of people like in nursing and you know, MD and anesthesia, it is quite literally like life or death every single day for the people that they work with. Yeah. And you see some very disturbing, um, gross, I mean, mortifying type situations and you're the one to take care of them. And that can be very, very rewarding. But at the same time for me, I wanted something that was a little bit more to the, to, to the good side, right? And I'm not saying that MDs and nurses and stuff like that don't have, you know, good days and stuff like that. But it's really fun and rewarding for me to see someone who came from, you know, hey, I can't walk. Like, hey, I can't, my knee doesn't bend right. I can't move my shoulder because it hurts so much. I mean, like, all right, let's fix that. And we don't need to do that with medication. We don't need to um, admit you to a hospital. We yeah. don't need to do any of this stuff that a lot of people are starting to kind of get a funny feeling about and, and things like that. And it's, it's a really healthy and holistic way of doing things. And um, I also like being able to spend time with the people that I'm rehabilitating or working with. Um, physical therapists, I mean, I get 45 minute sessions one-on-one -on -one with every, every patient I see. And so I get to really know them as a person and it makes it a lot, that much more rewarding when I'm able to help them. And I know, you know, nurses and doctors and things like that sometimes get the reputation of, not giving, not getting that much time to spend with their patients for whatever reason, because they're so busy, um, you know, understaffing things like that. And just that adds to the stress, adds to the difficulty of their work life. And uh, yeah, but I mean, with physical therapy, it's so much fun and so rewarding. Um, and it has a great work-life balance, which I'm really, I'm, uh, th those were the big things that sold me is the social factor and being able to work with them one-on-one -on -one and the work-life balance. I mean, I can't, it doesn't get much better than that. So. Yeah. I want to dive into the balance thing, but before we do that, so how did you, so you said you weren't uh, you no know, super athlete and uh, hurt yourself. So, so what happened uh, or how did you get into fitness in general? Like you said, I guess your, your parents and you were surrounded by medical, but like what drove you to like really fitness, fitness? Sure. So like working out and uh, the idea of um, fitness in general has always enticed me. Like everyone said, you only get one body, right? Yeah. And so you always hear older people looking, like looking up and coming back down the, the wisdom that they pass on to you, take care of your body. You only get one, you know, you yeah. can be as rich as you want, but if you don't have your health it's worth nothing. And so that really stuck with me. And I was like, well, shit, we gotta, you only got one man. So you gotta <laughs> make it count. And, um, so I always grew up liking exercise, whatever it was. Um, I mean, I played multiple sports. I've tried dang near everything. Um, and my dad was a really big, um, like he would work out always consistently every day growing up, stuff like that. Like, you know, first memories were going to the gym, like yeah. four or five years old, I'd be hanging out with the receptionist while dad works out. So, um, my dad was a successful bodybuilder back in the day. Um, I don't know exactly what competitions or whatever he won, but he was very successful and he always took really good care of his health. Same with my mom. And so that upbringing really um, facilitated what I like to do and, um, my interest in overall health and, uh, taking care of myself. And I guess that translated into, you know, physical therapy in general, that's a yeah. gift. And, um, even though I, as you know, just my way of life, a lot of people unfortunately didn't get the same education and the same appreciation for overall taking care of yourself mentally and physically that I was able to right away. So, um, being able to, 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 to step in and be that kind of authority figure in that, in that realm is really rewarding for me. Cause it's something I've always done. And it's something I'm passionate about and it's something I really uh, take very seriously. So. Oh yeah. It's super important. I mean, I, I just, you know, I, I started my fitness journey. I, I don't even know what year it was probably my, I don't know, probably junior, maybe sophomore summer. Um, sure, in high school or college? High school. All right. And, that's perfect. Yeah. And that was something that I like, I started doing it and then I, I started falling in love with it. And then I yeah. got introduced to like making sure you lift actually properly and different stuff like that, which mm -hmm. I think is really cool. Cause I want to talk about this too. Like, isn't it interesting how like some workouts you can do? Um, I mean, you saw me in the gym the other day and, and we talked about this, but like there's some workouts that you can do that. Like we see on the internet and whatever, and they say they target this area, but 
in fact, there's like different workouts that can target even more highly that area. Like, right. Absolutely. That, so it's like working out smarter versus working out like, you know, harder. Right. Kind of situation. Yeah. Well, and that's exactly what it is, is, you know, if you're into, it depends on what your goals are a hundred percent. Cause there's no, I mean, I don't want to say there's no wrong exercises, but you can use an exercise in uh, an infinite amount of ways, depending on how, what your goals are. So um, for the people who want to target every single little muscle and stuff like that, you can critique and change the angles on everything, you know, to the nth degree for those people. But if you're just in there and you want to sweat and just get after it, I mean, you can do one exercise until you feel like you're about to fall down. And that's a good workout. Man. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm going to be honest. There's, there's a million different ways to do it. And, um, as long as you're not doing it, you know, quote unquote incorrectly. And I say incorrectly with the sense of you're going to hurt yourself or like, you're going to cause issues to your joints or muscles or things like that. A lot of people try splitting hairs or saying like one school of thought is perfect. And if you're not doing your rows with this proper position and, and, uh, you know, you're not using this weight or this grip that it's incorrect or you're not doing well, right. You know, I try not to get into the weeds with that too much because it depends on what you're shooting for. If you're a big bodybuilding guy and you want to make every muscle pop, then yeah, you got to focus on where your angle angles are and what your grip is and you know, how long, how long are you holding the weight for and things like that. Mm -hmm. But if you're just in there to move as much weight as you can go move it, bro. Like if that's what your thing is, like as long as you're not throwing your back out or being stupid, if you're getting a little rock with you, I mean, that's your body's way of compensating with, the the overload and that's what muscles respond well to is progressive overload and um you know you're gonna see results it, i i always say the people who want to sit there and spend eight hours come up with the perfect workout they're already losing time because yeah the actions speak louder than words right get in there and just do a 60 minute workout and then do it again tomorrow and then yeah. do it again tomorrow and you're gonna see results way better than anybody who's trying to structure or create this workout layout it's just like you it doesn't matter because working out is the most simple and easy thing to do but it takes discipline it takes consistency and those that's where people fall off and uh yeah so i mean it's it's tricky yeah those two are the biggest things discipline and consistency because i mean that's how you that's how you build right that's like Mm -hmm. that's and that's exactly it so one of the things i wanted to uh touch on earlier was what your goals are. So you asked me everybody in, in our gym, um, every, every single time that I've like asked like, Hey, how do I, you know, what's the best, this, what's the hazard? They're like, well, what are your goals? And I like that a lot because it is true. And I think for everybody listening out there too, like figure out exactly what you want to do. Not exactly, but like you said, like go do your 60 minute workout, whatever you want to do. But if you're trying to build or shred or cut or bulk and stuff like that, then yeah, figure out what your goals are because it is important. And and you definitely have opened my eyes to that and showed me that. And everybody in that gym has. Yeah. Um, Yeah. It's a special group over there. Yeah. It's, it's awesome. So then the next thing, uh, I mean, why, why is it so important to you? I mean, we've touched on this too. I mean, your the, the work-life balance, the relationships that you get like one-on-one. So I guess let's talk about the work-life balance. Cause this, I wanted to talk to you about like, uh, what was it? It was the, well, we'll get there, but, uh, <laughs> but yeah, the, why is that so important to you? What is, sure. what does that balance mean to you? So, so, I mean, work-life balance is exactly that. Like as much as I love my job and I love my profession, I love what I'm able to do. I wanted, I don't want to work to live. I want, or I, sh- I should say, how does it go? I don't want to live to work. I want to work to live. Right. Yeah, yeah. So I'm not there to try and put in a hundred hours a week. Like that doesn't, that's not healthy for me. You know, some people, they can operate like that, but I am very social and um, I value my relationships with people an awful lot. Yeah. And I know that those take time and those take uh, effort. And if you're putting all your time and effort into like the one thing, like physical therapy or any one thing, you know, if you're just at your job too much, other things suffer. And I don't like that. And like I say, you know, it says it in the term work-life balance. So there are times when you have to balance out, um, you know, your work, your job and your health overall. And I'll always say this, I'll always choose my health or the health of somebody around me over my work. Because no matter what you do, work is always going to be there tomorrow. There's always more work to do. So the fact that you need to take care of yourself and find the value in 
um, those around you and doing the things you love. Like that's what life is really about. And I was very lucky with finding a profession so perfect for myself as physical therapy um, and working with people and, and seeing all the smiling faces. You know, you never see people yeah. frowning at the gym. People are always happy, hanging out, doing well. You know, even on the bad days, people are like, okay, yeah. I'm in here lifting. And um, it's a good time, man. It's always fun. Like it's yeah. just, why would you not want to be around a supportive and encouraging and healthy environment? Like that's, that's what it boils down to is why would you put yourself in anything less than a, and like, if you could, why would you put yourself in a super stressful or harmful situation or a healthy situation, right? Yeah. Something where you, where you enjoy going to, or you, you know, you look forward to it. And uh, so, I mean, that's what work-life balance is to me. I enjoy it because I see it prosper in all the other areas of my life, you know, my relationships with my family, with my friends. Um, and it's just, those are all what really matters to me at the end of the day, you know, taking care of myself personally. Uh, those are all big things for me. And um, no, I'm not saying that my patients aren't or anything like that, but um, <laughs> it's all, it's all equally, you know, important in that way. So um, yeah, that's what work-life balance means to me. And my parents have been a huge factor in teaching me like, Hey, you know, you can work till you're blue in the face. And, and when, whenever you're doing something, do it to the best of your ability and, and go for it. But at the same time, take care of yourself first, because like, like they say, you know, in business, you could work your tail off, but the second something happens to you, they're going to replace you in a month. So mm -hmm. it's just, you know, take, put yourself first, pay yourself first. That's really, important. so I like that. Cause balance has been a huge thing in my life. Like that. I like, I think everybody tries to find that right. That work life right. balance, because it's, it's been so important. I listened to a podcast today actually, and it was talking about balance um, between work and life and whatever it was. And they were saying that balance is like an equal thing. Right. But he's saying, instead of thinking of work life balance, think about it as work life. Um, what was it? It was up. Let me look really quick. Cause it was in some minutes. Sure. Um, he said it and I was like, oh, proportions. He yeah. said, make sure that everything has the correct proportion. So like you said, like your family, your connections, your, you know, personal relationships, like those ha have major proportions to you. Right. And then your work is sometimes lower proportions, but then sometimes right. your work is higher proportions. Right. So it, it is a balance, but at the same time, if you think about the proportions, I really like that idea. So, yeah. um, that was a huge, but Yes, like that ebb and flow. It's, it's yeah. Just, so, sometimes it's more give and take. More sometimes it's more job. Sometimes it's more fun. You know. Yeah. But it's important to have that and to to realize that. That's the other thing. And if you aren't happy or you're feeling stressed or you're, you know, a lot of a lot of it comes from you know depression or mental health and things mm -hmm. like that. When you're when you don't have that balance, and so being able to find that balance, everything goes better. Everything goes better. Your whole life changes. Yes. And, I'm just not like me and, you know, I like you, everybody that I know are just not willing to sacrifice that and nor should they, nor should they be expected no. to. So, yeah. Let's okay. So one of the major things that I think people have an issue with is talk about balance here um, is including working out in their routine, because mm -hmm. I think a lot of people think that they don't have time. Right. Yeah. And if you don't make it a priority, and what do we say that it takes? Consistency and discipline. So if you don't make it a priority, how like how can people make it a priority? Like what's the easy? Because I feel like you got some tricks up your sleeves for that. Sure. Um, but yeah, like how can people incorporate it into their lives easier? Or like what's the mentality <laughs> to do that easier? Yeah. So, I mean, it's tough because that's why I think that's why I like physical fitness so much is because there's no shortcuts, man. Like yeah. you, there is no pill to go and like, like feel, you know, like lose body fat. There is no cheat around running five miles. Like mm -hmm. there is no way to, 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 to go around it. Like yeah. you have your consistency and discipline, like you said. And so for people who aren't doing it, you have to just grab the bull by the horns and step into the deep waters. Like, if you don't know what you're doing, go talk to somebody. I mean, like everybody there, like personal trainers, physical therapists, a friend who knows how to work out. I know the, the gym can be very intimidating if you don't know what you're doing or you don't want to look like an idiot. That's a big one. You know, your social, you know, you don't have your social circle there or you're not aware of how this exercise works. So you're going to look like an idiot doing it. Yeah. Or you can't lift a lot or you're going to hurt yourself. And a lot of people run into that. And I totally understand it. 
But at the same time, you have to realize that from my experience in working out in different facilities and meeting people throughout my whole life there, I mean, everyone's, it's so supportive. Like everyone there wants you to succeed. Everyone there is competing against themselves and that's about it. Yeah. So going there and just kind of trusting the system of being like, hey, like, you know, I want to get fit. And that could be, it depends on where you're at in the world um, of fitness and things like that. Like that might look of look like something just as easy as walk. Go for a walk for 10 minutes, you know? So that's the best thing for your mental health, in my opinion. Just going for a walk, just clear yeah. it. Um, but if you want to get into, you know, weightlifting or exercising and things like that, that's not everybody's gig. And that's totally fine. I'm not one of those people where it's like only weights all the time. You know, yeah. you, need to, yeah. you need to mix it up. You need to keep things fresh and enjoy it. Um, but that's kind of why I like fitness, my guys, just because it, you, there's no two ways around it. Like you can't fake being the fastest kid. You can't fake lifting the amount of weight you do. You know, there's no cheat to that. I mean, you can go get steroids, but even then yeah. you still have to put in the work. You still have to go to the gym and exercise. And, um, I think there is a balance to that as well. You know, I know people have kids, families, other obligations, jobs, um, but you need to find time to do it. I'm not saying every day, but if you can't, but uh, if you find like even 45 minutes up in the gym, exercise, go walk, you know, go for yeah. a bike. There's a thousand different ways to get active and all of them are better than doing nothing or thinking that you don't have time. Like I promise you people have time. And yeah, that's the part that is tough is the, like working it into your schedule. You just, I can't do it for everybody. I do it for me because I find the value and importance in that, but you need to first things first, find the value and importance of that in yourself, like in your own daily life, because then you will find time. Cause that's what you give your time to are things that you find value in satisfaction. In. And, you know, after the first week of, of working out or getting more active than you previously were, you're going to be sore. You're going to be like, this sucks. This is why my, this is dumb. I'm not getting any better. I put on a pound, you know, I feel sore everywhere. Going up the stairs sucks. But at the same time, six months later, you're going to be thankful that you started doing that. And you're going to feel it mentally. You're going to feel more energized You're going to be sleeping better. You're going to be more happy with your relationships because just, it, it just is, it just enhances life in general. It does. And uh, yeah, so there's no, two ways around it. You just need to put in the work. I don't care what it is or how that looks to you, but find your own routine, man. And uh, that's the whole point of it. It's not making everyone fit into a cookie cutter, you know, thing like exercise or template of what I think it should look like. It's finding what works best for them and then giving them the independence to understand and appreciate it. And that's, that's the end game, man. I tell you what, you do that. You're gonna have a lot of happy people in the world. Yeah, you will. I, I agree with everything you said. I mean, I think, I think one thing that you could say to anybody listening to this that like they're trying to get started or incorporate it into their routine are what are your goals? Like what? Like, oh, it absolutely. Because it's it's so true. Because like you said, you can go in there, you can just do it for sixty minutes, or and and I think that what it really boils down to, because I know a lot of people, I know older people that I talk to, like the thing is like, well, I don't know what to do or this or that, and and it's like you said, just walk, just bike ride, just. Right. You know, go in there Just and do whatever start. it is because yeah. anything is better than nothing like you said and so yeah it is and yeah. I, you know there's there's plateaus that i think you reach like because i know i've done it i mean you've probably done that too like you reach that plateau and you're like okay like seriously again and again and again and then you kind of drop back or whatever it is and i don't know now i've been going pretty consistent for a while now and it feels fantastic i mean you get Good more you, energy you know yeah thank you, you feel yeah. great you really do. And uh, you're looking great, by the way, too. I see you. In Thank there, you. So. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and I know. hard work pays off. Like there's, there's yeah. no shortcut to feeling good about yourself or getting the results you want. And <clears throat> like you said, what, what are your goals? And even if your goals, <clears throat> excuse me, are as easy as getting health, like, honestly, yeah. that's my goal. My goal isn't lift a certain amount or, you know, compete in a certain anything. But my goal is to just stay healthy and stay active. And I think everybody should everybody should want to stay healthy and stay active because, I mean, if you're a financial guy, you know how much money it's, you, you spend on medications or a surgery or anything like that. Yeah. Um, from a mental health perspective, you feel amazing um, after working out. 
you know, all these aspects, people say, you know, why would you want to work out? Why would you do this? It's, it's without question. I, I don't think anybody's arguing the fact that um, health is very, very important. And that's, that's why I love my job is because those who are interested in making themselves more healthy, I, I can, I can offer something to them. Yeah. Yeah. You yeah. feel, yeah, that's great. You know, I think one thing that I wanted to touch on too was I, I, you can work out anywhere and do anything, right? Like you don't oh, need to buy a gym membership, but I think one thing that's funny, what you were saying is like, people don't want to spend the money now on a gym membership, but like they'll spend money on the medication and the surgeries and whatever it is later right, if, right. if they weren't active. Right. And that's, right. I don't know. I mean, it's touchy. Cause like, you don't know if anything's ever going to, ha- I mean, stuff could happen to us too. You know, we could, yeah, absolutely. you know, whatever, you, but you can't, you can't point fingers. Yeah. But um, I, I, I do find that funny. So I, I agree. They, they walk out and they grab their Coke and their, you know, and whatever drink they want, they go to their Starbucks. And I'm like, there's nothing wrong with that. But when you're doing that and not wanting to take care of your health and then wondering why, you know, things aren't going well, or you are always so tired after your fourth coffee at 1030, you know, I'm like, yeah. hey, come, come work out, suck it up and work out for a couple of weeks that you feel better like it just you can't you can't you can't replace it there's nothing no. to replace it. no so. uh one thing that was interesting to me which i would love i think you know i think you at least said what your goals are um but for this but like i uh so i don't take pre-workout or anything right yeah. but but i'm wondering like for those people that do or don't either way, like what are the benefits of really like taking pre-work workout versus not like, is it, is it really all of them healthy or whatever? Cause I think one thing that you told me, um, which we could touch on this too is protein. Um, you told me, I think it was like sodium was like, has to be, or should be less than 30%. Otherwise they're all the same. Right. Something like that. Yep. So, I mean, a lot what I was trying to get at with that comment is, um, a lot of, companies will put filler in there right so they'll be like oh my gosh you have x amount of protein per scoops and that's fine and dandy but then if you look at what is in the ingredients stuff like that you'll see um sodium or things like that that are just it's just like filler right it's just adds to the substance of the um the powder that you're buying and so it's kind of it's kind of a business thing it's kind of like oh you you would fit a little bit more in there there's 40 servings in there but they added eight scoops of uh sodium you know or salt or whatever in there and it's just like mm, just i i just always am mindful of that because it's a very um unregulated area and they charge a lot of money and if you're eating a well-balanced diet um and getting the proper amount of sleep you don't need it i mean i look at what a lot of people were able to do prior to um pre-workout and mm-hmm. protein powder and things like that and i'm like if you're eating right and you um, want it bad enough, you can do it without. And again, that stuff costs a lot of money. I know friends that's hundreds of dollars a month on their pre-workout and their supplements and, and things like that. Yeah. And it's not a bad thing. And, and, you know, there's nothing against that, but I just don't personally use it. Um, I always find it easier. Like whenever I'm like, oh my gosh, I'm tired. I'm like, well, 30, I saved 37 bucks I'm not buying pre-workout. So I guess I can find the energy because I'm saving money, but yeah. that's my opinion. And, uh, you know, it's just one of those things that isn't necessarily studied a whole heck of a lot and getting used to that amount of caffeine and all of the other uppers that are in, um, pre-workout and some of those supplements, I don't know. I, they just don't rub me right. I don't have any real yeah. science or like, I can't quote research on it, but I just don't use them. And, yeah. uh, I mean, if you do use them more power to you, um, I recently took, I recently did like a cycle of creatine and I've never done creatine or anything like that. And that's one of the most safe supplements out there. And, um, I did notice a difference. It was pretty cool. It, you felt here and stuff like that. But again, I didn't think it was life-changing. It wasn't like, wow, I need my creatine or, you know, I need my pre-workout or I can't work out. It's like, then, then you better find some other motivation because, yeah. you, should, you know, like I, you should be able to work out without your three hour routine prior. Um, <laughs> but that's just me. That is interesting though. Cause I, I have seen that stuff about creatine and I was thinking about that and there's a bunch of different things like that. And especially with all the social media now, like mm-hmm. I know for a fact, um, and like on there, you know, I'll see specific workouts that target this. Right. But it's like, I don't yeah. know how factual it is. Right. And then, yeah. you know, same thing is like, Oh, look at the effect of creatine this versus now. And like, so it's meant to do that. Right. And obviously that's just, we, we both know that, 
But for those people that don't know a lot about it, I mean, that's why I come to you or anybody in the gym and talk to about it because I want to know if it's like, it's actually something that I need or don't need right. and this and that. Right. And yeah, that's interesting. So really quick, just like, I guess, I mean, you kind of already said it, but like, what are some things to look for on, I don't know, like, how do like you nutrition labels of pro- like powder and stuff like that? Yeah. I like that. Um, so, I mean, things I look for, I buy, like I have protein powder, but I don't use it to be like, Oh my gosh, I need my protein throughout the day. I like yeah. it. Cause it makes my smoothies taste good. Mm-hmm. Um, and I buy the cheapest one with a low amount of sodium from Walmart. I don't remember what it is. I ripped the label off right away. Um, cause it always falls off anyway, <laughs> but, uh, <laughs> but, uh, I mean, I just, I don't think it's worth spending the money on it to be completely honest. I think yeah. it's very overinflated and, uh, it's just not valuable to me unless you are one of, you know, the top 5% of athletes in the world and you have to strictly watch your diet and strictly do this. And you are doing recovery and you're working out for 60, 90 minutes every day. And you need to get all these calories in and supplement things. Mm -hmm. Um, then, okay, great. You have, you have a case there for why you should be taking some of this stuff. But for a lot of the people who work out and then go party on the weekends or, work out and then you know they 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 don't take their diet other than that seriously um but they want to spend all this money on supplements or things like that they just it's just diminished returns is all and i just don't find the value in it even in myself um i would much rather come home and have a chicken breast asparagus and rice or some healthy well-balanced meal and drink a gallon or half gallon of water like something and just stay hydrated and um do that because when it's not done that way you know you don't need to supplement everything in my opinion and i think whoever um was in charge of the marketing and pr stuff for all of these uh, big supplement companies should get an a plus because they have a lot of people convinced that they need to be having a protein shake right after every time or they're gonna you know get smaller or like you need your 500 milligrams pre-workout to to uh you know get going in the day and stuff like that mm-hmm. and i'm like it's in my opinion it's more business than it is actually necessary because we didn't have that back really in 2005, 2008, 2010, when things were all just starting to hit the market. And now all of a sudden everyone needs it regardless. Everyone's walking around with their little, you know, mixie of, of yeah. whatever, of like, like drugs, they need, right? And I'm just like, hey, like you can, you can do it without that. But a lot of people like it. And I'm, that's, that's their deal. But yeah. I just, I just never fell into that. And uh, that's okay with me because I'd rather eat a well-balanced diet, get, eight hours of sleep and try doing that and uh there's a very small group of athletes wise that need that um to go above and beyond and uh if you're eating a well-balanced diet, getting eight hours of sleep and stuff like that by and large you're going to be doing just fine you don't need a lot of the other stuff in my opinion yeah so. let's move to diet then so i mean this is a huge thing i've heard um i mean working out obviously we've we've known that that's important right but i've heard that almost diets more I guess it, it depends on what you want to do, but uh, yeah. more important than exercise. So yeah. like, it definitely can be. Um, so people always talk about how do I lose fat? You know, how do I, how do I change my body composition and working out is great. And um, you know, walking 30 miles in a week and, and being in the gym for two hours a day, every single day is definitely going to help with that, especially if you're not used to doing that prior but at the same time, if you're doing that and then punishing yourself or not rewarding your body after putting in all of that effort with the proper nutrition, are you going out and you're drinking or drinking is a huge one that just seems to really handicap a lot of people's progress. Um, that and a lot of like the sugar preservatives. I mean, there's sugar in everything nowadays, especially in America where you buy, you buy bagels and there's 20 20 grams of added sugar in two bagels. And you're like, why is this even here? But that's where a lot of hidden calories come into play. So portion sizing is huge. And then just eating properly. I mean, when I say eating properly, I don't mean to like degrade people, but a lot of people know what the right choice is for food. You know, like if there's a, if there's a banana there or a bag of Doritos, people know which one has more nutritional value, you know? Um, but it does kind of go back to our point a while back where just because it's an easy answer and a simple answer doesn't mean that it's, you know, that you're going to do it every time. It's that yep. discipline. You have to have that consistency. And um, unfortunately, there's, you know, a lot of people that don't have it or they have it for, they're really motivated for those two, three, four weeks. And then they don't see the 20 pound results that they really want. And so it gives up. But 
that's when you need that discipline to kick in. So that motivation is there almost as a kickstart to yep. get you there, to get you in the gym, to get you moving. And then you need that discipline to take over so that habit to form so that you, you continue to ride on something that's more stable than just your motivation and your emotions. So um, as far as diet goes, man, I mean, it really is as easy as eat your veggies, like eat some chicken, eat, like just eat healthy. I mean, and I'm, I have a beer I'll, like every once in a while, nothing yeah. wrong with that. I enjoy my gin and tonics, um, <laughs> you know, like I have no issues with that at all, but it's all in balance and it's all in moderation, you know? Yep. And uh, if you want to see big results, you're going to have to do things that you haven't done before. Right. So the people who are like, I want to change or whatever, but they don't change their lifestyle. It, you know, you're not, you're not going to see results and that's in anybody's life. That was, that's the biggest thing you hit right there. Lifestyle, like exercise. And like, I know <laughs> this sounds so like gym rat, whatever, but like, <laughs> it, it, dude, it, it's so true though. Like it, your it, exercise and like being healthy is a lifestyle. It's not just like a hobby, right? Like that it right. can't be like, it's, it's a, it's a thing that you, that you're doing every day or, you know, every other day or whatever it should be. Right. Yeah. Cause it's very important to do. And I think, I think with eating and I mean, talk about results too. Like, See, I don't know if the, it's a blessing or a curse, but every single time I worked out, this is how it's been since I've started working out. Sure. I literally, the like the day of, I, I'm done with the gym. I go home and I look in the mirror. I'm like, oh my God, like I look so much better, right? right. But people, but and nothing has changed. <laughs> but like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, but, that one workout wasn't life changing. Exactly. But like, but to me, like I know, like I think I see it or whatever it is, right? right. So, um, but to other people, it's like, okay, like I'm not seeing any results. And like, I mean, you touched on this, it's that consistency, it's that discipline, but mm -hmm. that's super important because if you look at anybody who's been working out for a while or has had a like change transformation of like losing weight or building muscle, whatever it is, like you got to give them props because they've been like, it's been not, we're not doing it to to see immediate results. You know what I mean? Like, it's not just an immediate result thing. Like you right. have to do it. And that's why I said it's a lifestyle because, because even now, you know, you're working out however much you're working out, you're still going to be doing that probably when you're in your, you know what I mean? Like, I yeah. don't know. Like, it's I don't know. Indefinite. Health, health is a lifelong process, man. It's not like you go on a, on a eight week workout session to work out for eight weeks. Like you work out because you value your health. And once you switch that gear from, I do this until I achieve my goal of 145 or, you know, lifting X amount of weight, whatever mm -hmm. to I'm doing this for my health. Then it switches from a short term or a um, temporary goal. Yeah. Right. Cause once that goal is achieved, what's next, you know, and as long as you keep planting goals, that's awesome. But if you switch it to the mindset of like, I need to do this for my health, you know, you need to keep challenging your health. You'll never be, perfectly healthy you know yeah. no one ever is there's that balance there yep. and there's people who work out in an unhealthy way there's people who obsess over working out and it actually deteriorates their life right it goes too far and um it actually hurts them so it is quite literally everything in moderation and when you're able to realize that and take that to your heart and really want to do something about it that's when you'll realize that working out or exercise in general is a crucial and um unavoidable part of your daily life or it should you know and once you realize that and you start taking that seriously you will that's when you really will that's when you'll really see the results you want um because yeah i see every once in a while there's you know you talk to um females who really want to lose weight but then i'm like okay well you have to you know resistance exercise is one of the best things to lose weight um, they found that instead of walking for, or doing stairs for 30 minutes, um, that you that's good, but you burn calories for those 30 minutes, then you go home and then you're done with something like resistance exercise. Your body has like an, a heightened, um, calorie burning rate, a metabolic rate for like 24 hours afterwards. So is, even is when you're sleeping that what? Sorry, sorry. Is resistance like strength training? Like, is it? Yeah, yeah. Okay. So that would be like with the dumbbells. You're over there. You're squatting. You're doing a deadlift. You're over there. You're trying to, you know, put something over your head. Whatever it is. Yep. Um, when you're doing things like that, you're challenging those muscles to do things that they're not used to doing. You're pushing them to fatigue. 
it burns more calories and girls are always so scared of they're like well I don't want to get ripped big and I'm like if it was that easy there would be a lot more dudes in here right yeah. <laughs> but it's just true I've heard that so many times where girls are like I'm scared of getting big I'm like I've heard I that too promise you you will not just wake up one day and be jacked out of three weeks of like resistance training you know and um I'm thankful because I think a that, that trend is starting to change a little bit. I see more girls actually getting into the gym and getting dirty with it and, and yeah. getting after like the squats and the deadlifts and really trying to work out hard. And um, they're killing it, man. And that's awesome. That's great for them because that's where a lot of the results really lie is something that's uncomfortable. It's something outside your bounds. And uh, it really, you know, you just got like, there's no other way to do it. You try to kick your own ass day in and day out. When you have yeah. that discipline, you'll get the rewards because you can't hide it whether you do or don't, you know, you can't work out and stay weak, but you also like, it just is what it is. You just have to, the results are there regardless. You know, you can't fake it one way or the other. So, yeah. No, I, I agree. I mean, that's one th See, my sister was a huge influence on me and still is for fitness. Um, now I think, you know, I work out more than her and whatever, but, um, but no, she was, she was a big, cause she, she started lifting. That's how I got into lifting. Cause she was lifting. Sure. And then, and then I, um, followed her and she always used to run. Like she would do, she was in cross country and all sort of thing, but, yeah. um, yeah, I got into, I got into lifting through her and I agree with you. Yeah. And, it, and it's crazy too. Cause like, oh, you know, I don't know how I've talked to you about this, but I don't know how active or, how accurate the like apple watches for like oh, sure. fitness bands in general for keeping track of calories but like i'll send them after workouts and they're just amazed when and i wanted to talk about that too but like do, do guys or do men like do they burn more calories on average than women or is that just like i don't you know because because i've noticed that like i'll burn way more than my mom and my sister well my mom yeah, of course but like my sister just because sure. but we're around the same age that's why i'm right wondering. well Men have more skeletal muscle mass, right? So we have more muscle, pound the muscle on our body in general, just yeah. stereotyping guys to girls. Um, and muscle is what burns, what burns calories. So, you know, to maintain your physical stature, your muscles need energy. They need to repair themselves. They need to constantly have energy. It's like an engine. Um, and so when you're working out, you are burning more because you're using more energy. And um, that is that is the generic reason as to why men burn more, right? We're built for that. We are built to um, go out and put out high octane energy and like, like produce a lot of um, not aggression, but um, yeah, just energy in general for what we do, you know, biologically, we were there to hunt, to run things down, to do stuff like that. Mm -hmm. So we needed that fuel and we needed that now. So our basal metabolic rate for men in general is generally higher. Now, if you take, you know, a D1 female track athlete and compare them to, you know, uh, average Joe male, she probably has a higher metabolic rate because she's constantly challenging her, her systems, mm -hmm. her body to achieving that next level of fitness. Um, and that's generally why men will burn more calories than women is just because our resting rate is just our resting metabolic rate is just higher we just have more skeletal muscle mass and that's what it kind of up to is it is it true that if you work out so like if you take the average joe right and then you take yeah. and you take me per se like i've only been working out for a couple of years now but yeah. but like you know my body type was different than it is now but like is it true that my metabolic rate is going to be higher like my resting stuff is going to be higher than his since yeah. I've been working out more. Yep. That's absolutely right. Because you have more skeletal muscle mass than you did three years ago. Your muscles have grown and it takes more upkeep for you to run your body. And that's completely normal. That's completely safe. It is what it is. And uh, that's, yeah, that's exactly what that means. So as you progress in working out or whatever that is, mm -hmm. um, your body becomes not only, you know, it needs more calories, but it also becomes more efficient. So let's say you become a huge runner, right? So something that doesn't necessarily put on muscle, but to repair yourself and that you're constantly using all of this energy all the time, your body's naturally burning more, right? Because you're constantly active. You're going to be yeah. way busier and way more active than a sedentary person or a person who just, you know, isn't active regularly. So yeah, that's exactly right. Um, people who are more active have a higher basal metabolic rate. That's what you call it. 
And um, that's why they like burn more calories. And if you go on to, there's a lot of different ways you can calculate or like get a ballpark estimate of it with like those in body scans or bod pods and things like that. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, that's kind of like the general concept is men generally burn more than women because we have a higher skeletal muscle mass. And then we are also built that way just biologically that we're going to, we're going to, we just have more us as males. And um, that's it. There's, yeah, just is what it is. That makes sense. So let's go to this really quick. So uh, we were talking about this. People just need to get in the gym and just do whatever they got to do. You know what I mean? Absolutely. Like, don't don't think about it too much. So what are some common mistakes that you see um, people when they start fitness, whether it's bodybuilding, um, cardio, anything like that, that kind of like that you can think of right like right now? Yeah. First things first, if you're starting off, people always go too hard right away. They're riding that high, uh, I don't know, whatever motivational YouTube video they just got done watching. And they want to become the next Mike Tyson or they want to become the next Boston Marathon finisher or whatever. And they go from not doing much or doing way less than they you know, are used to. And then they go to the gym and they will pound themselves for two hours. They'll spend 45 minutes on the treadmill. They'll go over and work out their whole body for 75 minutes straight. And they will burn out and like, they'll do that every day for seven days. And then they'll be like, oh my gosh, my body hates itself. Everything's broken down. They can't walk upstairs. It, like it just sucks. And so my recommendation for people who are just getting going is start slow because that'll help you stay, you know, keep it within your, keep it within your bounds of, you know, Hey, I haven't done this before. Start light, see what, see, see how things move and then do it for 40 minutes. Go home, eat, eat up, drink some water, rest. See how you feel the next day. Oh, that felt okay. All right, we'll push a little bit more next time. Oh, that was too much because now I can barely lift my arms. Ah, back off a little bit. Wait until your body catches up to that new activity level that you're now mm -hmm. trying to set for yourself. So that would be my recommendation for people who are just getting back into it, who are wanting to start lifting or walking or whatever activity they want to do. Don't just jump in head first and then end up being in deeper waters than you want to be because you watched a YouTube of someone who's done it their whole life and now is trying to achieve same goal 48 hours because you usually end up getting hurt burning yourself out you end up not liking it and then you relapse or just rebound back into all right i'm going back to what i know and like and yeah, that yeah. is relaxing hanging out watching tv um you know and just not maybe not taking your health as seriously as you were trying to and it's all well intentioned but that's that that's that emotional high that people like to ride on that emotional high that motivational high where they they can they're conquer the world yeah, and yeah. It's good to be there. That's healthy, but you have to rein that in and even use discipline right away. That way, so that's yeah, that's a that's a smart uh, kind of thing to think about because that is true. And you know, I've noticed too. If I take off time, um, I can't just go back in, which is really frustrating, actually. Uh, but you can't just go back in and, and start lifting the same thing that you were you were you were lifting. You know, right. Right. Um, it takes time and it takes, and it takes effort. And yeah. um, that's why you have to respect the people who have been doing it for a while. And uh, you can really, once you start doing it, you have an appreciation for what people can achieve. Right. Yeah. Because it's not easy. It's not, you know, it's that 1% better every single day type mentality versus why wow, I worked really hard for 48 hours. Where are my results? And that's what a lot of people struggle with in today's modern age is that instant gratification of being able to hopefully there's a pill or I should with, with the right amount of supplements, I'll achieve my goals quicker and stuff like that. To an extent you yeah. could, you can make an argument, but at the same time, nothing is going to replace discipline and nothing's going to replace hard work. And you can't fake that. You either have it or you don't, you know, yeah. or every single day, there are times where I don't want to work out. There's times where everybody runs into, you know, days of, wow, I need to be lazy. I want to sit on this couch and do nothing, you know, but it's in those moments that you know do you kick yourself in the pants and get up yeah. and do it or what yeah you flip your mentality so like the one thing i wanted to say too this was earlier when we were talking about like people in the gym starting in the gym or whatever it is that like no one is paying attention to you. Like what I've realized is that everyone there is concerned with themselves and what they're doing and making sure that they're like, whatever. Right. right. So in all reality, no one's looking at you. And so I, I think that was the biggest thing. Cause when I first started working out in a public gym, you know, I was like, Oh gosh, you know, I got to go curl 15s next to this guy who's curling forties. Right. Like, it's just like, right. a, but everyone's on a separate time. You know what I mean? Like right. he might've just, exactly. So yeah, that, that's the biggest thing. And I, and, 
I, what's cool about the gym is that it's community. Even if you don't know the people there and stuff, even working out, like now I'm going at a consistent time, right? Like I see the same people at the gym and uh, exchange, you know, hellos and head nods and stuff like that. So it's cool. Um, but everyone's there for the same reason. And that's just to get healthier and to get better, right? Exactly. When you're all striving for the same goal, it makes it a lot easier because you're all, you know, you're not competing against one another. There. No. You know, you're, you're there. You're there to watch everybody's. I mean, like you said, that's where you and I met was gym. You know, we just eventually you stopped in, had a question, and I said hi enough times or what have you. And mm-hmm. you just started talking because everyone's everyone wants the same goal of being healthy. And yeah. just because you're healthy doesn't mean I can't be healthy either. It's not a it's not a, if you have it, I don't. It's just, hey, let's all get there. You know, yeah. it's all a team effort, really. It is. Well, Isaiah, I want to, I, we got, I got my three end questions that I was going to ask you, um, but I yes, want to know if you wanted to add anything else to what we were talking about. It's been great. Yeah. Um, I appreciate the time today to, to, to come and talk to you about this and uh, thanks for having me on. And I really enjoyed talking about something I'm passionate about and, and, and take very seriously. And yeah. uh, it's always fun to, to delve into this. And it's funny because I feel like this is just another one of those conversations you and I have in my office <laughs> yeah. you know, every other week or whatever it is. So it's just good that we have it here. So, um, yeah, man, appreciate it. It was a great talk and, uh, yeah, good for you, man. Keep yeah, your I, ass out there. I love it. You're no, I, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. I, uh, I'm, I'm glad we did this. I, I learned a lot and Absolutely. I hope other, I hope, I hope other people learned a lot. So yeah, and likewise, man. I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm here for anybody and everybody. I just want people to be healthy. Like I said, it's not, it's not a me versus you event. It's I want everybody to find their own version of health and that looks different for everyone. So. Perfect. Absolutely. All right. You ready for the three questions? Yes, sir. All right. Number one, what is a daily habit that has changed your life? Um, what do I say? Waking up early. Waking up early is something that recently I've started trying to do. And that looks different for everybody. For waking up early might be seven o'clock for someone, might be four for some other people. But waking up early and having like a consistent workout or a morning routine has really helped me lock in throughout the days and uh, become more efficient with my time. So, yeah. I like that. I like that. Number two, how would you consider your purpose in life right now? Oh, I love it, man. I think my purpose in life right now is exactly what I'm doing. And that's helping people achieve their goals to stay healthy and uh, get to do things that they never thought they would be able to. And that is what gets me up in the morning. And that's what keeps me up at night. And uh, I, that's, that's it, man. That's, that's the goal for me. I love that. Uh, and, And you're definitely doing that, by the way. I appreciate it. Yes. Number three, what is something you know that you wish others understood? Um, working out is not hard. Like exercising is not hard. It doesn't have to be complicated. It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be done. That's a hundred percent. in. anything is better than nothing. I don't care if you go in there and you lift the same weight 45 times, or you go walk on the treadmill for the same treadmill, whatever, anything is better than nothing. And all you have to do is start, take the first step. And like you said, you'll start growing these relationships that you never thought you'd have. You'll start running into people. You'll, you'll start changing your life in small ways. And then you'll look back a year later and you won't even recognize the person that you were a year ago and you'll be thankful for it. Dude, that, yes, you hit the nail right on the head. Yeah. <laughs> that Thanks, was man. it. Yeah. All right, so, Isaiah. Well, thank you so much for being on. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. Thanks for having me, Kate. It was a good time. I appreciate it. it. All right. See you later. See ya.